respected chairman distinguished members of the FAI esteemed delegate i would like to thank fertilizer association of india for giving me the opportunity to speak about the impact of covid on supply chain management of fertilizers in india we are all aware that covid has had a devastating impact on world economy indian economy was no exception however contrary to the decline witnessed in other sectors agriculture witnessed a growth of 3.4% in the first half of the year fertilizer industry supported this phenomenal growth by increased production import sales and efficient distribution in spite of many hurdles this success story crafted by the indian farmers and supported by the industry needs to be told my attempt through this presentation is to provide a perspective on the role played by fertilizer sector against all odds and in view of the support given by the government of india in enhancing agriculture output and ensuring food security to the millions in india amidst the havoc brought by the virus corona virus pandemic can be termed as a black swan event in history causing immense social and economic devastation including the largest recession since the great depression the first case was reported in wuhan china in december 2019 it spread rapidly in countries across the globe with europe and us severely affected world health organization declared the outbreak a public health emergency of international concern in january 2020 and a pandemic in march 2020 Several countries have responded by imposing severe lockdowns and restrictions disrupting global supply chains. Globally, 53.4 million cases have been reported up to 15th November 2020, out of which 1.3 million 1 million deaths have been reported. India tally stands at 9 over 9 million cases with recovery rate of 93%. the pandemic still continues to wreak havoc across the world first case of covid-19 was reported on 30th january 2020 in india initial spread was limited through track and trace and effective intervention our honorable prime minister gave a call for a nationwide 14 hour voluntary public curfew to be observed on 22nd march 2020 as a preparatory drill which was widely observed a national wide lockdown was imposed by the government of india with effect from 25th march 2020 for an initial period of 3 weeks up to 15th april 2020 further extensions have been granted up to 3rd may and later on extended up to 31st of may during this lockdown all activities barring essential commodities and services had come to a standstill It is from 1st of June that the government started unlocking the country barring some of the containment zones in three phases. As a consequence of this lockdown there was drop in economic activity and the GDP growth in the first quarter came down to minus 23.9%. IMF has con estimated contraction of minus 10.3% in financial year 2021 amidst declining numbers in all other sectors agriculture has emerged as the lifeline for the economy agriculture contributes about 17% to national output in gross value added terms growing at the rate of 3.2% over 6 years going up to 4% in 2019-20 Agriculture is a critical activity for the economy providing employment to over 60% of the population. During the year 2019-20 there was a record production of 296.7 million metric tons of food grains in contrast to 72 million metric tons in the year 90s monsoon in kharif season that is 95.8 cm 10% above the long term average of 
88 centimeters with well spread distribution 2020 monsoon is reported to be the third highest since 1990 the highest was in 1994 followed by 2019 and then current year 2020 the six meteorological subdivisions have received normal to excess rains adding to adequate reservoir storage and increased soil. All the major, medium and minor irrigation projects and tanks are full to the brim with good moisture levels in the soils. Agriculture is the sole sector to show positive growth rate of 3.4% in the first quarter of current financial year. Here I am showing you an illustration of the crop zone area during the first half of the year from April to September. As you can see, there has been an increase of 4.8% in the net zone area from 106.61 million hectares in the year 2019 to 111.69 million hectares in the year 2020. The rains have contributed to higher sowing, increased demand for fertilizers, and increased consumption. We are expecting record Kharif production of 144.0 million metric tons of food grain in the current year, up from 143.3 million metric tons last year. Now I would like to highlight some of the steps taken by the government of India to deal with the emerging COVID situation. Considering the fact that the lockdown coincided with the Rabi's harvesting season, agriculture and allied sector, including fertilizers, was exempted from the general lockdown. Detailed instructions were issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs and other related ministries or departments, outlining restrictions imposed on various sectors. The exemption covered farming operations by farmers and farm workers, procurement of agricultural produce, operation of mandis, movement of harvesting and sowing related machinery, etc. Indian Council of Agricultural Research issued a national agro-advisory listing detailed guidelines and exemptions for agricultural operations. The government stepped in with record procurement of rabi crops, primarily 39 million metric tons of wheat at MSP with outgo of Rs. 75,077 crore to the farmers. Government also notified hike in MSP of rabi crops such as wheat, gram, barley, rapeseed, mustard, etc. Kharif procurement of paddy has been stepped up by 18.6% to 28.7 million metric ton up to 17th November 2020. Procurement centers have been increased for Kharif procurement to 39,030 from 30,549 a year earlier. Significantly, the government also initiated path-breaking reforms in the agriculture sector, which included prompt delivery of Kisan Saman Nithi directly into the farmers' bank accounts, improving liquidity in the financial system to promote credit flow, amendments in agricultural marketing laws to provide freedom to farmers to sell their products and realize remunerative prices, allowing contract farming and Relaxation in Essential Commodities Act 1955. The fertilizer industry faced various challenges during the COVID period. There were multiple bottlenecks and disruptions faced by the industry in the initial days. One of the prominent issues faced was the shortage of labor due to lack of mobility and subsequent exodus from plants and ports. There were enhanced health safety concerns on account of the spread of virus and some amount of mortality in plants and offices. The urban clusters like Mumbai were affected in particular. There were serious disruptions to local and global supply chain networks, including rail, road and sea impacting distribution. There was a pileup of inventory at plants and ports. Difficulties were being faced in sampling and inspection. Raw materials procurement was a major issue. Procurement of bags was a concern. Many suppliers, contractors and port operators invoked 
force majeure clauses to escape liability in the event of pandemic affecting execution of projects and planned operations. In addition to this, there were some restrictions imposed by the government of India on imports, global tenders, which primarily affected public sector undertakings. These kind of supply chain disruptions also impacted execution of many capital projects in the making, as existing contractual arrangements and sources of supply were affected, pushing the commissioning of these projects further by 6 to 12 months. Department of Fertilizers stepped in actively and facilitated the trade in addressing supply chain bottlenecks to ensure uninterpreted production and movement. The role played by the department can be termed as nothing short of stellar. They coordinated extensively with states and union territory authorities, Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Railways and Agriculture to resolve issues faced by fertilizer companies. The department monitored the requirement and availability of fertilizers continuously on a day-to-day -day basis with state departments, fertilizer companies, and ensured uninterrupted supplies across the country. With their effective intervention with the Ministry of Railways, demerit and warfare charges at loading and unloading points were completely waived under force majeure initially for three weeks from 22nd of March to 14th of April 2020 and this was further extended up to 17th of May 2020. Even after restoration of demerage and warfage from 18th of May 2020, free time for rakes placed for loading was doubled up to 31st of May 2020. Further, zonal railways were given the dispensation to take suitable decisions with respect to waiver of charges. Department of Fertilizers also closely coordinated with the Ministry of Shipping and Ports for priority birthing of fertilizers, discharge and movement of ports. Difficulties faced in sampling and inspection were also resolved by deputing state level inspectors in place of the nominated central agency. In view of the concerns with regard to spread of inf infection, fingerprint verification was suspended allowing for use of Aadhaar number and EPIC or Kisan credit card number in lieu of biometric authentication for acknowledgement of sales at retail points through point of sale machines. Department of Fertilizers also launched a cashless or digital payment system through use of QR code in July 2020. The gap between requirement and availability was met through adequate import of urea by the Government of India to the tune of 3.72 million metric tons. Further, 4 million metric tons has been imported in two branches. In addition to this, there were several policy measures announced by the department which boosted confidence for the industry as a whole. One of such measures was the notification of rates of nutrient-based subsidy or NBS for phosphatic and potassium fertilizers early in April 2020, enabling the industry to market the products aggressively. Issue of fixed cost reimbursement for urea units under modified NPS3, which was hanging fire for a very long time, was resolved by issue of notification on 30th of March 2020. The existing energy norms under NUP 2015 for 14 urea manufacturing units was extended for a period of six months, although there was a penalty of 10% imposed. But this has given relief to a number of units. No further extension has been granted. Budget allocation of rupees 71,309 crores was available for FY 2021, out of which government released rupees 22,018 crores subsidy, that is 31%, in April itself. Subsidy of rupees 57,000 crore has been disbursed up to September 2020. Thankfully, Government of India has recently announced additional subsidy of Rs. 65,000 crore as stimulus on 12th November, which is expected to help the industry recover 
from its ongoing fund constraints. In response to the positive measures taken by the department and the government of India, fertilizer industry as a whole rose up to the challenge posed by COVID. Companies adapted to the new normal by minimizing or rotating manpower at plants, arranging transportation, boarding and lodging for workers, use of thermal scanners, masks, sanitizers, creating awareness, enhancing COVID-related medical coverage, tying up with hospitals for COVID treatment of its employees, etc. At the rake points also, handling of rakes was done after following measures like social distancing, hand sanitization of laborers, providing masks, hand gloves to laborers and truck drivers, sanitization of wagons and trucks, and so on. The companies issued various advisories on coronavirus preventive measures, which were circulated amongst dealers, retailers, h and contractors, and other related agencies. In some cases, distribution of fertilizers right up to the farm gate was also provided by many companies. This is an illustration of the basic features of the distribution network in fertilizer supply chain in India. The primary raw materials used in fertilizer sector are natural gas, ammonia, phosphoric acid, rock phosphate, sulfur, etc., which are procured from both local and global sources. While 75% of the fertilizers are locally produced, we are also supplementing it with 30% imports of fertilizers like urea, DAP, MOP, and various grades of NPKs. The finished fertilizer products from plants or ports are dispatched by rail, road, or coastal vessels to different parts of the country. The distribution network involves a large chain of wholesalers and retailers about 0.3 million. Large number of warehouses operated by Central Warehousing Corporation, State Warehousing Corporations, various federations, cooperative societies, private agencies, and dealers. Over 130 million farmers are targeted through this extensive supply chain, which is tracked at every stage through a fertilizer management system overseen by the Department of Fertilizers. The sale is effected only on final acknowledgement of receipt of material on the point of sale device by the farmer. Here I would like to talk about the complexity of the fertilizer supply chain. 172 fertilizer plants are spread across the country. 31 urea, 19 DAP or NPK plants, 111 SSP, 10 ammonium sulfate and 1 ammonium chloride. Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Odisha account for 70% production. 41 fertilizer plants are located near the coast for easy availability of raw materials. Production is supplemented by imports to the tune of around 30%. Fertilizers are being handled at 24 major and minor ports. Finished fertilizers are required to be made available to 739 districts with 935 rake points and over 7,000 blocks. Sale is being effected through 0.3 million retail shops targeting over 130 million beneficiary farmers. Whereas production and imports is happening around the year, Consumption is primarily limited to two seasons, that is, Harif and Rivi. Now coming to rail logistics, Indian Railways, with its large network of 64,015 route kilometers, is the dominant form of transport, accounting for 80% share of fertilizer movement. Movement by rail is deemed as primary movement from the plant or port to rake point, which is fully reimbursed. The rake movements from plants and ports were severely affected in the first few weeks after the lockdown. Problems were also being faced at plants as well as destination points due to the non-availability of labor for unloading and lack of trucks for transportation of fertilizers from rake points to go downs. As you can see from this chart, there was substantial dip in the number of rakes being moved in the months of March and April. However, the shortage was made up in subsequent months 
registering an overall increase of 11.2% during the six month period. Similarly, 9% increase in tonnage carried by rail was witnessed from 24.6 million metric tons in April to September 2019 to 26.8 million metric tons in the same period in 2020. India has a huge network of roads spread over 3 million kilometers of which national highways constitute about 72,000 kilometers. About 20% of the fertilizer movement in India is being carried out by road. Road sector was one of the worst hit at the start of the lockdown due to stringent restrictions imposed by various state governments and non-availability of trucks, drivers, etc. Movement of fertilizers by road dropped sharply from 33.5% from 0.73 million metric tons in March 2019 to 0.49 million metric tons in March 2020. However, the services were restored quickly with increased uptake in the month of April itself. As a result, road movement also registered increase of 12.5% from 5.35 million metric tons in April to September 2019 to 6.01 million metric ton in the same period of 2020. Third option available for fertilizer transport is the coastal movement. India has a vast coastline of 7516 kilometers serviced by 13 major and 187 minor ports, also supplemented by Indian waterways. The coastal movement being negligible in comparison to other modes of transport was also affected to some extent in this period. Movement by sea deploying coastal vessels dipped to 53,826 metric tons in the six month period this year, as against 66,070 metric tons last year. Now I would like to take you through the broad monthly trends in production, import and DBT sales of fertilizers in India from January to October 2020. Although the initial trends showed sharp decline in production and import in March and April 2020, the subsequent months saw sharp recovery on all parameters. Major impact on production happened in the last week of March 2020 and first week of April when many plants were either not operational or operating at lower capacity. DAP plants particularly faced production challenges resulting in decline to the tune of 30% due to limited availability of sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. NPK production was also partly impacted in the month of March and April, which however picked up substantially in subsequent months. Sudden surge in industry and DBT sales have been noticed from April onwards, possibly due to panic buying and stocking up. Month-wise, DBT sales started declining from August onwards. This chart shows the monthly trend in production, import and DBT sales of urea from January to October 2020 in comparison to the previous year. As you can see, major impact on production happened in the last week of March 2020 and first week of April, when many plants were either not operational or operating at low capacity. There was a minor blip in production of urea in the month of March 2020, which however increased from April onwards. Imports also followed a similar pattern. DBT sales dipped in the months of March and April, shot up substantially up to July and started going down after the season. It appears that some panic buying set in after April for stocking up by the dealers and farmers due to overall uncertainty in the market. A similar pattern can be seen in the case of DAP as well, with production coming down substantially in the months of March and April. DAP plants faced production challenges resulting in decline to the tune of 30%, which was somehow compensated with imports. This chart shows the monthly trends of imports and sales in the case of MOP. MOP is not locally produced 
but wholly imported. Disruptions in global supply chain impacted import arrivals to some extent in February to May, but thereafter imports have picked up substantially. MOP sales this year has been much higher than last year due to reduction in India price and lower MRPs for the product in the market. NPK production was also affected during the months of March and April, but picked up thereafter. Similar pattern is noted in import and sales. This chart shows the trends of production and sales in case of SSP. SSP is locally manufactured and no imports is taking place. Although local production was impacted in the months of March and April, production and sales picked up thereafter and started dipping from July onwards. This chart shows the monthly trend in DBT sales from April to September. Soon after the commencement of the lockdown in March 2020, slight decline in DBT sales was witnessed, primarily due to the restriction in movement. However, there was a sudden surge in sales from April onwards, mostly as a result of panic buying by the farmers and dealers, coupled with lower international prices. However, from July onwards, DBT sales have shown a declining trend. The fertilizer industry in India was already on the growth path when COVID broke out. Total fertilizer production in the year 2019-20 had registered a growth of 2.9%, touching 42.7 million metric tons as against 41.5 million metric tons in the previous year. Total fertilizer sales touched 61.7 million metric tons, an increase of 7.1% over the previous year. As you can see from the previous charts, barring the initial impact on production and distribution in the month of March and April, significant increase was noticed on all parameters during the period April to September 2020. Production went up by 3.8% to touch 21.2 million metric tons. Imports touched 11.4 million metric ton, an increase of 18% over last year. Industry sales went up by 14.9% from 29.4 million metric tons to 33.8 million metric tons. There was a phenomenal increase of 24.6% in DBT sales from 27.2 to 33.9 million metric tons. This table shows the requirement, availability and DBT sales of various fertilizers during April to September period. It can be seen from the table that the availability of fertilizers was adequate to take care of the overall demand. As against 4% increase in projected demand, that is 29.2 million metric tons, availability during the period was up by 6.7%, that is 32.6 million metric tons. Fertilizer production during the period April to September 2020 registered a growth of 3.5% over the previous year, with increase in urea production by 4.9%. Production of DAP witnessed a dip to the tune of 11.4%. Production of NPK or NPKs increased marginally by 0.3%. Production of SSP surged with increase of 14.6% over the previous year. There was substantial increase in imports to the tune of 17.5% in the Kharif 2020 season. Fertilizer imports touched 11.34 million metric tons as against 9.65 million metric tons in the same period last year. Urea imports increased by 22.2%. DAP imports went up by 12.1%. MOP imports went up marginally by 3.9%. There was a steep increase of 94.3% in import of NPKs. Fertilizer demand has been exceptionally strong right from the beginning of Kharif 2020 season. Overall sales of fertilizers by the fertilizer companies to their distribution channels during the period April to September 2020 touched 33.85 million metric tons, 
an increase of 14.9% over the previous year. Sales of urea increased by 7.1%. DAP sales went up by 28%. MOP sales for direct application increased by 15.8% over the previous year. The percentage increase in sale of NPK and SSP fertilizers was also in the range of 24.4% and 17.7% respectively. Another interesting feature of the six month period is the phenomenal increase in DBT sales of fertilizers inclusive of city compost to the tune of 24.6% from 27.2 million metric ton in the previous year to 33.9 million metric ton in the current year of Kharif 2020. Urea sales was up by 15.7%. DAP sales shot up by 51.1%. NPK sales went up by 39.4%. MOP sales increased by 36.6%. And SSP sales went up by 8.4% from 2.23 to 2.42 million metric tons during this period. What is the outlook for the rabi season? Despite the economic contraction, and market uncertainties, the outlook for rabi season seems to be positive for the fertilizer industry. What augurs well? The monsoons are being sustained. There is high storage reservoir levels in all the reservoirs. It is assessed that there is about 92% capacity as against the 10-year average of 72%. There is an increase in MSP for rabi crops announced by the government to the farmer. Procurement has been enhanced. There is high offtake of seeds. The markets have been freed up through the progressive legislation. And there is higher subsidy allocation by the government. The challenges that we foresee for the forthcoming season is that the overall downturn in the economy continues. There is reduced demand and consumption. The COVID concerns are continuing. The vaccine is still months away. There are inflationary pressures. There are farmer agitations continuing in Punjab and some of the northern states. The uncertainties in supplies of raw materials continue. The rainfall average in the current Rabi season is estimated to be lower by around 8% and some deficient rainfall has been reported in northwestern states, Tamil Nadu, etc. However, in the overall perspective, the forthcoming season appears to be very promising for the fertilizer sector. In conclusion, I would like to say that key role has been played by fertilizer industry in supporting the agriculture sector during the period after COVID lockdown. Despite increase in overall demand and sales, Department of Fertilizers played a critical role in supporting the industry with progressive policies and effective execution in spite of the pandemic. Fertilizer Association of India's role in liaising with various government departments, particularly the Department of Fertilizers, and enabling various policy and execution decisions in favor of the industry has been lauded. This has ensured continued food security to the languishing millions and ensured productive jobs and income to the labor force who migrated in mass scale to the villages during the pandemic. I would like to say that supply chain management has been a key factor in ensuring seamless availability of all types of fertilizers to the farmers at his doorstep. The growth surge has picked up momentum and the future looks promising. The reformist policies adopted by the government under the overarching vision of Atma Nirbhar Bharat initiated by our Honorable Prime Minister will further add motivation and muscle to the industry. Thank you. Uh, so with this we conclude the second uh, part of the presentation so there are two questions relating to the first uh, presentation made by mr sankachan uh,
so uh so i will i will read it the first question is from mr ss modak uh he is i think chief supply officer or what term in the written whether the increase of 11% rate movement will be sustained in the coming months or year on year uh product next year as primarily the increased rate turnaround was faster due to non movement of uh, or passenger trains so this is the first question maybe he would like to take then i will read the second question thereafter yeah uh, i don't think it is correct to say that uh, there was a faster turnaround of rates due to minimal movement of the passenger trains uh, because i think you know uh, during the initial days uh, primarily up to uh, as i already mentioned the demerit charges uh, were uh, made free up to almost the middle of uh, may uh, up to may 18th or so and thereafter again uh, free time was doubled and during those days uh, there was a substantial hold up uh, at both the plants ports and as well as at the rake points in a number of places there was a major problem related to you know uh, availability of labor uh, and uh, so there were rakes which were stuck for maybe 4 5 days for loading and unloading but the railways also has given i mean rose listen to the challenge and in subsequent months from uh, uh, may onwards i think the situation has uh, substantially improved so the peak season has been well catered to and uh, as far as railways is concerned i have a, they have a huge availability of wagons over 2 lakh wagons are available particularly bcn and hl wagons uh, during this period it was also benefit i think uh, the other movements like cement has uh, dipped and uh, the uh, railways had the priority for movement of fertilizers and food grains uh as you can see the sales figures for the last, i mean sales increase fertilizer sales have uh, increased by 7% last year and during this april to september period the increase is almost 15% and the railways have effectively catered to this demand and going forward also i think they have their uh, you know uh, wagon uh, requirement and the procurement plans in place and i'm sure they'll be able to cater to the fertilizer movement uh, effectively Thank right uh second question uh, is related to uh again uh, by mr devdatta choudhury he is saying uh fertilizers are not entitled for subsidy rail freight through containerized rake movement by cancor or other player can uh, uh the department of fertilizer consider this subsidy through containerized uh, movement it will reduce handling at uh, so i think this pertains to the ministry of uh, ministry of dio but if you have uh, I, will, i will come to that but if you have to add to anything to this uh you can add the narrative to that i think i think this is a very uh, i mean uh, op- viable option which uh, the department may also kindly look into sir because uh, containers as you know it is a multimodal option whether by rail road or uh, by sea now the coastal movement is also in place so this is uh, uh, a very uh, you know good option to transport the products effectively and without any pilferages or damages in route and uh, this is also can be also uh, act as a point of storage uh, and we will also be able to utilize uh, other uh, 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 warehousing uh, uh, facilities available with the uh, container operators such as private freight terminals and multimodal uh logistics parks which are rapidly coming up in the country it will it will also address the issue of uh, peak season non availability of railway rakes uh because uh, a large number of private uh, terminal operators are already in the fray and uh, the containers are uh, domestic containers are also easily available so these can be an effective uh, way to transport the fertilizers the one concern that i find is that sir that the uh railways have uh, identified uh, container traffic in a different uh, uh, class as per the goods tariff and the fertilizers are in a lower uh, category or uh, class 130 which is lower than the container class so if that uh, is equated and uh, the uh, subsidy is made applicable for container movement as well i think this will be an excellent option going forwards right just to add to that i just want to say that uh, this issue is being discussed and debated in the ministry 
uh one of the challenge that uh, has been i mean that i that we feel uh, will have to be overcome is that uh, containerized movement generally involves uh, packing of loose fertilizer in the container and then uh, at the destination point you will have to bag it so that's no, one sir, of the challenge no sir uh, these uh, bags can be packed in the container bags as well and about 27 yeah. 27 tons can be packed in a 20 feet container sir 20 feet container yeah but yes, this sir. issue is being so uh, there is no final decision also this is being discussed and debated the pros and cons of it so i hope uh, appropriate uh, decision will be taken very good presentation by mr sanchin uh, who is the director marketing from rashtriya chemical and fertilizer limited now we are coming sir towards the close of our annual seminar 2020 i thank each and every delegate who has been part of our annual seminar 2020 and to all the senior officers the ministers and all others media those who have been part of our journey thank you very much